ahí estamos. All right, so let's begin the class right away. Today's topic is going to be the ones you can find on the screen. Rational functions, rational functions, all right? Rational functions. All right, so let's begin with what are rational functions. Beautiful. It's, it's a pretty simple function. In here, I have three examples of rational functions. Now, how do you recognize rational functions? Simply because of the name, ra rational, yeah, rational, those, those rational come from the word ratios. Hopefully, you guys remember what a ratio is. A ratio is just a division, right? A number over another number. Division, right? A number over a number. You guys probably know it as fractions. Two over three. Two over three. That, that's a fraction, right? Okay. We know it in math as ratio. The ratio between two and three. Two over three. A ratio. Okay. So when we talk about poly, uh, rational functions, when we talk about rational functions, so these three functions in here are ratios. As you can see, these are fractions, right? These are fractionaries. So we know them as ratios. But the difference is that these numbers, the one on the numerator and the one in the denominator, these two are not numbers, are polynomial functions, right? Look at the first one. This is a polynomial of, of degree two, right? This is another polynomial of degree two. In here, in the function f, we have a polynomial in degree three on top, and down we have a polynomial on, of, degree, of degree two, right? So these are, these are polynomial functions, both up and down. And that is the main characteristic of a rational function. The fractionary is compound by a polynomial function, I'm sorry, polynomial function in the numerator and a polynomial function in the denominator. That right there is a rational function, right? That is a rational function. Uh, hopefully you guys wrote that down. <laughs> Hopefully you guys wrote that down. All right, this is the this is the real definition, right? What I said was just an explanation, but this is the real definition. All right. So in here we have r of x. Remember r and p and q. These these letters, right? These are the names of the functions, right? We have the function r, which is a ratio, right? A rational function. On top, we have the function p, and down behind, we have the function q. These are just the names, right? Now, the one we put on top, the one on the numerator, we call it p, the function p. And the one on the denominator, we call it the function q. So if we come back to these examples, so if we come back to these examples, take a look at the function f, this one, the one in the middle, the second one, all right? In the chat, please. Let's see who's paying attention. Let's see who's do not. <laughs> In the chat, please write down what is the function p? Again, for the middle one, for the second one, this one in here, the one that I am highlighting, the function f. In the chat, please, what is the function p? Let's see. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Tefa. Thank you, Mari. Uh, no, no, no. Sophie Lobo. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, you guys are the best. Only three answers, though. Can I have more? Bianquita. All right. Thank you, Bianca. Anybody else, guys? Can I have more? Santi Camacho. All right. Samuel. All right. Carol. Oh, Carol. All right. Hi, Carol. You good? Jose Tamar, Majo Roa, Patiño, Papa. You gonna practice? <laughs> Carol, hi, Mr. A. <laughs> Mr. A. <laughs> Danny, thank you, Danny. Samuel Rodriguez, thank you, brother. All right. So you guys are correct. The ones who practice, the one who actually answer, you guys are correct. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Isa. Yes, remember. When we talk about ratios, we call the one on top P, and the one down, we call it Q. 
So the one, the, the function p is x to the cube, x cube, right? X to the third power. This one on top. All right, guys, pretty good, pretty good. Now, the, as you can see from my three examples, different functions are gonna give you different ratios, right? So you need to be aware of which one is the p and which one is the q. In other words, which one is on top and which one is down. That's it, that is just it, guys. All right, there is one mm, rule. Let's call it, there is one rule for rational, rational functions, look. Q and P and Q, these ones, P and Q, are just polynomial functions, right? But Q cannot be zero. That is the only rule. Q cannot be zero. All right? Q cannot be zero. Simply cannot. It cannot be zero. All right? That is the main rule, guys. Go ahead and write it down somewhere. If in some exercises, maybe in the book, maybe in today's exercises, guys. Maybe I give you the, this function, the function g, 3x squared over 0. And you're thinking, you're thinking, all right, that's a rational function. No, no, that is not. That is not a rational function. All right, that is not. Because the denominator is 0. The denominator cannot be zero. It cannot. It, it cannot. Because having a zero in the denominator is like dividing by zero. You guys know that what it, that is one of the uh, Ten Commandments <laughs> in mathematics, you know? We, we cannot divide by zero. That, that is not possible. Right? We don't know how much is a division by zero. We just don't know how much that is. All right. Beautiful. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about something I'm a lot... A little bit more important, the domain of these functions. I know, guys. I know when I say domain, some of you are thinking, ah, yo nunca entendí que es eso, no, pero no, otra vez domain, otra vez voy a perder matemáticas. I know, I get it. <laughs> I get it. But don't be scared, guys. Don't be scared. Domain and range is absolutely easy. It is absolutely easy. And it is more easier the more you practice, all right? The more you practice. Now, can anybody say what domain is? Let's say, let's see if anyone knows. Now, if you really don't know, you can just say, I don't know. That's okay. And I'll explain what a domain is, all right? But don't stay quiet. Say something, please, in the chat. Danny. David Rodriguez, you are correct. It is a set of numbers, David. It is a set of numbers. Those numbers have a characteristic. Anybody has an idea? What is the characteristic? No. Salome, todas las funciones de X. Uy, almost, Salome. Almost, you had a good idea. Salome, Salome, you have a good idea. <laughs> so yes, the characteristic has to do with X, with the variable X. The domain are, again, write it down, please, somewhere. Write it down. Now, I am going to read it. I am going to say it in the simplest way possible. This is not the real definition for a domain, all right? I am going to be lying to you here. But I feel like what I'm about to say is the easiest way to understand what domain is, right? The domain of a function, the domain, is just a, a set of numbers. Just a lot of numbers, a bunch of numbers, a lot, a lot of numbers, right? And those numbers have one characteristic. That characteristic is that all those numbers are values of x. I'll explain that a little bit longer and a little bit better with some examples, all right? With some examples. All right. Uh, let's do record this here. And let's take a little bit. A little bit. Yes. All right. So, guys, take a look at this. Of course, since I don't have uh a ruler my drawings are gonna be awful 
let's take, let's take a look at this. Let's say this is the X variable and the Y variable, and this is a Cartesian plane, all right? The regular old Cartesian plane we all know. Now, let's say this in here is gonna be my function. You guys ready? This is my function, look at this. Look at this. That is it. That's my function. Now, it is just from this point to this other point. My function does not extend. This is just a little piece. So let's try to figure the domain. Now, the domain will just be every single value of the axis. Now, the axis for, for this function goes from this value, let's say this is 1, to this value. Let's say this is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. All right, let's say this is 7. Right? Can you see what I did? In other words, the domain for this function here, the domain will be the set of all real numbers from 1 to 7. Now, you can write that like this. Um, block the notes, block the notes. I hate having to write with my, with my, um, with my mouse. So I'm going to use this to write. You can write it like this, domain, domain. So all numbers, numbers from, all numbers from 1 to 7. That's it. You write it like this, guys. You write it like this, and you are correct. Because that is what I have here. Every single possible number, so these numbers, everything inside here, everything inside here, these, all of these, every single one of these numbers in here. Right? Those numbers are these ones, from 1 to 7. Now, if I change the function, again, let me, let me show you the domain here. All numbers from 1 to 7. If I change the function, so the, the blue line, if I change it, if I draw a different line, then that is probably going to change the function. That is probably going to change the domain. Let's take a look at that. Let's erase all of this. Let's take a look at this function, at this function. What about this? Like that, like that. But let's say this stops here and also stops here. This does not continue to infinity, all right? I am not making arrows. Remember, I can make arrows and this shows that the function continues to infinity, right? But I'm not making errors. I'm just saying that the function stops there. So what will be the domain? Okay, for the domain, this is what you do. You think about the values in x. So the value, the function goes from one extreme, this value, let's say this is negative 2. We have negative 1 in here, right? This is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, 10. All right, this is 8, right? And then to the other extreme, here. There we go. There we go. So look at that. The function is between these two values, negative 2 and negative 8. Because look at that. Every single value stays inside this range. The blue line does not go outside the red lines. It does not go outside the red lines. Did you see? So that will be our domain. Look, we're going to write it here. Domain. All numbers from negative 2 to 8. There we go. <clears throat> from negative 2 to 8. That is our domain, guys. That is it. That is how you write domain. You write it like this in a quiz, in an examination, in your homework. I'm not going to give you homework, but let's say you were going to have homework. You write it like this, and things are fine. 
you are doing a good job, guys. All right? Show me, please, in the chat, please, or m moving your head into the camera or doing something. Tell me if you understood this topic or not, please. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> all right. All right. So if you understood, show me the domain of this one. Show me the domain of this one, guys. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Take a look at this function. Uh, let me do the marks here with red. Uh, negative two, negative three, negative four, right? Let's say there. You can you can kind of read, right? You can kind of count, right? The values, right? So this is gonna be the drawing. Here it goes. Ready? Here it goes. There. Ah! <laughs> so what is the domain now? <laughs> Right, let me help you with this, with some guides. Let me help you with some guides. Uh, there. In the chat, please. What is the domain? <clears throat> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, all right. We have eight answers so far. Cool. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Let me let me just erase all of this. Let me erase all of this. All right. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Fifteen answers. All right. Looks like you guys understood. Well, looking at your answers, I had good news and some bad news. All right. All of you understood the idea but only three of you had the correct answer. You cannot say, guys, that the domain is one and nine. That is not the domain, guys. If you say the domain is one and nine, you're saying that the domain is just two numbers. And the domain are not just the numbers. The domain are every single number between these to there. Every single number. We have a lot of numbers, infinite numbers. So when you just write 1 and 9, you are having a mistake. Now, you could say from 1 to 9. From 1 to 9. That is also another mistake. Because from 1 to 9, you're not saying what is there from 1 to 9. You need to make sure you, you say the numbers from 1 to 9. From 1 to 9. So this is the correct way you write the domain. Domain. All numbers from 1 to 9. There you go. This. This is the domain. Now, some of you may have said 1 to 9 just to save time, right? Maybe maybe you did that. Just to save time. You understood that you had to write all of this, right? Maybe. But if, it, but if this was a quiz, you need to make sure you write it all. All right, guys? Beautiful. So you all got the idea. You all got the idea. And a lot of you got the right answer. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So that is what I wanted to say about the domain. Now, take a look at the domain in a rational function. We have it here. Look. What is here? From here. The domain of a rational function is the set of all real numbers with some exceptions. With some exceptions. Right? except those for which the denominator is zero. So if we were to calculate the domain here, we would have to write the domain like this. Domain of a rational function. So all, look at this. I'm not saying all numbers. I'm saying all real numbers. We have the word here, all the word, the word real. So I'm saying they're all real numbers, except, and I have to write down what number I am accepting, all right? Are you guys following me here or not? Okay, cool. All right, so let's calculate the domain on some examples. Let's do the domain of the first function, right? So let's take a look at this. This is going to be our rational function, right? What is the domain? Well, according to our definition here, the domain is all real numbers. So we have the first part already here. All real numbers, 
Cool. All real numbers. We have the first part. But, again, according to our definition, we have to take out some numbers. There are some exceptions, right? Except those for which the denominator is zero. Okay, guys. For what values of x is the denominator going to be zero? Because those are the values we need to take out. We don't know. So far, we don't know what value are we going to take out. Except what? We don't know it. We just don't know what is the value we are going to take out. So we need to find that value. All right? Take a look at this. We need to exclude the values for which the denominator is zero. Again, the domain is all the real numbers. All of them. Every single number that exists. The real numbers, right? All of those. But we are going to take out some of those, maybe one or two, some little exceptions, one or two. Which number makes it so that the denominator is zero? Now, how do you find that value? Well, you're going to take that denominator and equal it to zero. We're going to make an equation here. X plus 5 equals zero. And all we have to do is isolate our variable. Take a look at this. 5 is positive. Look, this is what this is all, all I did, right? 5 plus, I'm, I'm sorry, x plus 5? x plus 5. It's the same denominator, right? All I did was equal it to 0 because I want to know what values make the denominator 0, right? So all I do here is isolate the variable x. Since 5 is adding, I'll pass it to subtract. And there we go. <laughs> we isolate the variable. So now we know, now we know that the value that makes the denominator 0 is negative 5. And that is the one that we want to exclude from the denominator. I'm sorry, from, from the domain. So in here, I'm going to write down my domain. Take a look at this. Domain, all real numbers except negative 5. There we go. That is it, guys. We did it. All real numbers except 1. Negative 5. Why are we excluding the negative 5? Well, because if we replace negative 5 in x here, we are going to have negative 5 plus 5. And that is a 0. <laughs> negative 5 plus 5, that's 0. And remember, we cannot have the denominator be 0. Um, teacher, but a question. Why do we use q instead of p? for exclude a number. Beautiful question, Danny. Take a look at this. That's it. This is what the, denomin uh, the definition says. Take a look at this. P and Q are polynomial functions, and Q, the one down, Q, is not the zero. Q cannot be a zero. So that is why we focus our attention in Q. Uh, OK, OK, thanks. Thank you, Danny. All right, now, now take a look at this. 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 Sometimes in mathematics, guys, sometimes in mathematics, we mathematicians, we are very, very lazy. Sometimes. <laughs> and we hate having to write all of these words. We hate having to write all of these words. So we use something that is called the set builder notation, which is this over here. This. This is the proper way of writing down any set. Now, the domain is a set. So this is the way we write sets, uh, domain. Now, of course, some of you might be thinking, Ah, ¿qué es eso? No, no entiendo. Otra vez voy a perder matemáticas. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> look, look. At the beginning, some of you said, the domain was hard and you didn't understand the domain. And then with a couple of examples, you kind of had the idea, right? So let me explain to you what is this here. Let me explain to you what is this. All right, let me show it to you. There. Okay, voy a pasar a españolito porque aquí la gente se me pierde un poco. Listo. Paso a español. Terminamos esto y seguimos en inglés. ¿Está bien? ¿Qué es esto que está aquí? Okay. Arranquemos con que, ¿cómo se llama escribir así? Esto se llama escribir en set. Builder notation. I note a 
así que pues no. me cuesta mucho trabajo escribir con el mouse mis niños perdónenme set builder notation siempre que encontremos un corchetico una variable una rayita así y luego otro poco de cositas y se cierra el, el corchete eso es set builder notation es una manera de escribir conjuntos ¿Listo? Es una manera de escribir los conjuntos. Otra manera de escribir el conjunto es eso, como lo tenemos acá, mira. Todos los números excepto negativo 5. Esa es otra manera. Otra manera de escribir los conjuntos es hacer toda la listica. Esa es otra manera. Entonces, mira, hace uno la listica, mira. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hace una la listica. El problema de esta listica es que le hacen falta a uno, por ejemplo, los decimales, ¿no? Se falta 0.1, 0.2, 0.3. Hacen falta también los negativos. Negativo 1, negativo 2, negativo 3. Y hacen falta los decimales más pequeños. 0.01, 0.02, 0.03, 0.04. ¿Eh? Así, hacen falta muchos. Y ahora los negativos de esos decimales. No, esto es, esto es muy largo. Entonces, por lo general uno no hace la listica. Hacer la listica, por lo general no lo hacemos. Porque es muy largo. La listica, por lo general, no lo hacemos. ¿Qué si hacemos? Hacemos set builder notation. Porque encontramos que set builder notation es mucho más fácil. Arranquemos con que set builder notation, mi niños, es como si fuera a escribir por, con clave. Como si fuese una... Uh, un código. ¿Alguno aquí ha trabajado con códigos? ¿Alguno le gusta la robótica o, con, o, o, o la programación? ¿Alguno un poquitín? Sinceramente, profe, el único de todo este salón que va a clase de robótica soy yo. Así que... Ok, ok, bueno, entonces este tipo, Dani, Dani, tiene de pronto una ventaja porque el hombre de pronto ha trabajado un poquito con código. Ok, esto es un código. Lo que pasa es que el código aquí es en matemáticas. Esto es como cualquier lenguaje que si no nos han explicado las palabritas, pues no entendemos. De pronto por eso vemos esto y parece raro. ¿Cómo así? ¿No hay que dicen? Ok, se lo voy a explicar paso a paso. ¿Listo, mis niños? Póngale cuidado. ¿Qué significa el primer corchetico? Esto significa algo en inglés o en españolito. Eso significa, déjame ponerlo aquí, es el conjunto de. Eso es lo que significa el corchetico. Sí, es un código. En vez de escribir, es el conjunto de, hacemos un corchetico los matemáticos. ¿No es más? Ok, borremos aquí. ¿Qué significa la siguiente? Lo siguiente que aparece, cada una de estas cositas significa algo. Entonces, vamos con la siguiente. Lo siguiente que aparece, la X. ¿Qué significa? Ok, eso también es parte del código. Y significa otra cosa, significa los números... Números X, los números X, eso es lo que dice ahí. Claro, si yo aquí hubiera puesto, por ejemplo, una A, otra variable, pues aquí hubiera sido los números A. Ok, si yo aquí hubiera puesto la otra variable, la variable Y, pues aquí hubiera puesto los números Y. Ok, eso depende de la variable, ¿no? Ok, sigamos, sigamos, sigamos. Entonces, ya mostramos dos de las primeras partecitas que aparecen. ¿Qué significa la tercera? La tercera parte. Esta linecita así como, como vertical, como echando para arriba. En algunos libros no está solo vertical, en algunos libros está así como, como en diagonal. Eso no importa, es una linecita, es una, es una separacióncita. Y eso lo que significa es, es una palabra, son dos palabras, perdón. Tales que... Eso es lo que significa. En inglés, este tal es que se lee como sash as. Déjame por, déjame por, lo pongo acá. Sash as. Creo que lo estoy poniendo re mal. No sé si esto es con C. A ver, sash. Sí, sash as. Tal es que. Ahora, ¿qué significa ese tal es que? Bueno, ese tal es que no es un lenguaje rarísimo, no. Tal es que es un, una cosa en español, ¿listo? Eso es una cosa en español. ¿Qué significa tal es que? Significa que cumplen cierta característica. Lo voy a poner aquí en paréntesis. Ok. 
que cumplen es una n cumplen si erta característica y hay característica me, me cansé característica este tal es que significa que, que cumplen cierta característica entonces vamos a leer hasta el momento que dice ahí hasta acá vamos a leer hasta aquí que, que dice acá hasta ay madre me, me pasé un poquito acá esto más esto más la línea ¿Qué dice hasta ahí bueno ahí dice es el conjunto de los números X tales que. ¿Eso dice ahí? Entonces, en vez de escribir un pocotón de palabras y gastar todo ese poco de tiempo, usamos el código. Para eso es el Set Builder Notation, muchachos. Para eso es el Set Builder Notation. Para ahorrarnos tiempo. Mira, hicimos en tres, gabara, en tres garabaticos. En tres garabaticos. Usamos un pocotón de palabras. Vamos con la siguiente. ¿Qué significa esta, esto de acá? Todo esto de aquí es... Una característica. Caracteri... Ay, característica. <ríe> la característica. En este caso, la característica, bueno, en este caso hay que saber leerla, ¿no? Aquí, aquí este es el símbolo de prohibido ser igual, ¿no? Se han visto que en las calles a veces hay un, un símbolo de P, ¿cierto? Y con una línea en el medio. ¿Se han visto que a veces uno va en el carro y aparece eso? Ok, pues eso es prohibido parquear, ¿no? Ok, pues eso es porque le ponen una línea en el medio. Si no tuviese la línea en el medio es porque se puede parquear, ¿cierto? A veces, a veces está el símbolo, un símbolo así. Con una línea en el medio. ¿Si ¿Sí la han visto o no? ¿Quiénes de aquí, quiénes de aquí han visto cómo, cómo maneja papá o mamá o, o les han dejado manejar? Aparece eso, ¿no? Eso significa que no se puede girar a la izquierda. También está para la derecha pero con una línea. No se puede. Esa línea así en el medio es que no se puede, está prohibido, está mal. No se puede. Y en este caso, esa línea pasa lo mismo. Mira, aquí tenemos esa línea. Ahí la tenemos. Ahí tenemos esa línea. Ok, pues aquí dice que X no es igual a, cinco, a negativo 5. Esa es nuestra característica. La característica es X no es igual a negativo 5. Diferentes set builder notations nos dan diferentes características. Esta es la única parte que hay que saber leer. ¿Listo? En este caso, esto dice que X es diferente de negativo 5. X es diferente de negativo 5. ¿Ok, mis niños? Ahí terminamos, no es más. Entonces vamos a leer cómo, qué dice completamente aquí este conjunto. ¿Qué dice ahí? Ese es el de notación de ahí. Ok, pues ese dice, ahí dice, vamos de a poquito, mira. Ahí dice. Es el conjunto, déjame borrar todo esto, es el conjunto de los números X tales que X es diferente de negativo 5. ¡Ya estuvo! Aprendimos a leer set build notation, no es más. No es más, mis niños. ¿Anotaron esto, muchachos? ¿Aló? ¿Alguien? ¿Lo anotaron? Sí, muchachos? profe. Gracias, Dani. ¿Los demás también lo anotaron, Ala? Ok, Samuel me hizo que sí. Muy bien. Ok, sal gracias, Salomé, por contestarme. Wow, alguien me contestó, increíble. Majo también, Tefa también. Wow, increíble. Los demás no lo anotaron a la wish. All right, now let's read it. Let's read it in, in English. Let's read it in English. Because this can be read in English as well. All we have to do is just change all of these to English. That's it. That's it. So let's do it little by little. The first is the set of the numbers X such as X is different than negative five. There it is. <laughs> We did it. We did it both in Spanish and in English. So simple, right? So simple. All right, the next step will be to ask you to read a new set builder notation. Let's do this, guys, please. Do me a favor, guys, in the chat. In the chat, guys. Read this to me, please. No. 
there. Go ahead in the chat, please. Read it to me. In the chat, in the chat, in the chat, in the chat, Danny. El conjunto de... Remember, guys, we are not going to learn math. We are not going to learn math if we don't practice, right? So take your time. Take your time. If you're in the cell phone, we'll just, just move the screen a little bit and pull up the, the keyboard and write down the answer, right? Just, just, just try it, guys. Just try it. You can write it in Spanish. You can write it in English. Both are good. Doesn't matter. Okay, we have one answer. All right, all right. You have one answer. Anybody else? Again, you can do it in Spanish or you can do it in English. It doesn't really matter. All I want you to do is to practice. Give it a try. Don't just copy what everybody else is saying, guys. No, give it a try. Beautiful. We have another answer. All right, we have two answers already. Good. Three. All right, three. Can we have more? Can we have more, guys? All right. Lunita, Nata, Valerie, Bianca, Leonardo. Alejo Nunez, Samuel Nunez, I don't know how to call you, brother. Come on, give it a try. It doesn't really matter if you are mistaken, guys. I am not going to read the answers, all right? I am not going to read the answers. Just give it a try. Give it a try. Thank you, Valerie. I appreciate it. Thank you, Valerie. <clears throat> Nobody else? Huh? Santi Camacho. All right. Thank you, Santi. All right. Okay, let's do this. I am going to motivate you a little bit, all right? I'm going to motivate you. The people who already answer, even if you guys are right or you guys are wrong, you guys are going to have one mark for today's quiz. Congratulations. You guys are going to have one mark for today's quiz. Now, I am going to count to 10. And if you don't answer, you're going to have a negative mark for today's quiz. Uh -huh. How's that for motivation, guys? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. You cannot copy your previous answer. So all of you guys who just clearly copied the previous answer are going to have to write again. You cannot copy the previous answer. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. All right. Look. I just wrote the word here. If you're not in these answers, you have a negative one for today's quiz. We're going to have to do this, guys. No, me va a pasar muy español. Mis niños. Me encanta darles clase, pero este es un grupo con el que más me toca esperar a que lo intenten, a que practiquen. Parte de aprender a hacer matemáticas es trabajar en clases, intentarlo, es dejar la pereza, es dejar la pena de embarrarla. Eso es matemáticas. Trabajar y dejar la pena de embarrarla, de cometer errores. ¿Okay? Todos cometemos errores. Está bien cometerlos. Está mal no intentarlo. Eso es lo que está mal. Así que les voy a quitar la maña. Bueno, a los que lo hicieron a tiempo, a las cuatro personas que lo hicieron a tiempo, tienen un más uno en el quiz. Mira, Dani, Tefa, Samuel, Valery y Santi Camacho. El resto, si no alcanzaron a escribir, yo, yo voy y miro el, después la, el chat. 
voy y miro. Y si no están antes de mi palabra here, tienen un negativo 1 en el quiz. Y vamos a seguir haciéndolo. ¿Listo, muchachos? Esto se acumula. Ahorita les voy a seguir preguntando. Bueno, pues inténtelo. Que si no, no, no van a sacarlo bien. All right, the answer for this one. Again, let's read it little by little. This is, is the set of numbers y such as y is bigger than 7. That's it. En español. Es el conjunto de los números y tales que y es mayor que 7. That's it. That is it, guys. That is it, guys. All right. Okay. How about this one now? How about this one? Take a look at this one. This is going to be the last one. This is going to be the last one. Go ahead and read it. Read it. I'm sorry. Write it in the chat. There. In the chat, please. Maria Salome, profe, que Mariana tiene problemas de internet. Thank you, Salome. All right, let's see how many of you are going to get the plus one mark in today's quiz. So, at the count of three, if you write it down, you have a plus one. One, two, and three. So, we have three, four, four winners. There, until the world here. Wish. <laughs> a lot more winners. All right. A lot more winners. All right. All of you have a plus one mark in today's quiz. Now, let's see how many of you have a negative one. I'm going to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, you cannot just copy the previous answer. That will not be valuable. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Until the word here. If you're not there in the word here, then you have a negative one in today's quiz. Look at that, guys. Huh? Mira, me, es, es triste como profe de matemáticas tener que empujar los mis niños con nota para que intenten. Sí, me gustó que muchos ganaron nota buena. Mira, Patiño. Majo Altamar, Tefa Cabrera, Santi Camacho, Lunita Umaña, Bianquita Ordóñez, Dani Osorio. Más uno en el quiz de hoy, ¿eh? En una marquita, ¿no? Es una marquita. Ok, mis niños, muy bien, muy bien, muchachos, muy bien. Pero los demás, bueno, de pronto fue porque no lo quisieron intentar o porque fueron un poquito eh, despacio, ¿no? Ok. Pero hubo muchas más personas en la parte de negativos que en la parte de positivos. Yo les doy valores. Yo les doy puntos positivos y también negativos. Hay que dar de los dos valores, ¿no? Hay que dar de los dos. Regalos buenos y regalos malos. Pero feo, feo que, que haya que empujarlos con la nota, muchachos. Hay que intentarlo en matemáticas. Si no, no vamos a aprender. Es lo que pasa. Si no, no vamos a aprender, muchachos. Ok. All right. So, again, as I said, I have the list of numbers here, the na of names, sorry, in the chat. All I have to do is com come back and take a look uh, of, of the answers. All right. So, don't worry. What I said, what I said is the reality. All right. People are going to get a plus one and some others are going to get a negative one. All right. That is the reality. All right. Beautiful. Let's continue. All right. So, why were we doing this? Oh, all right. Because we were finding the domain of the function, right? So a little bit of a review. To find the domain of the function, simply equal the denominator to zero. Isolate the variable, and that is going to be the number we exclude from the denominator, all right? Let's jump into the second question, question B, second exercise. How do we find the domain of this one? All right, to find the domain of this one in here, simply, let's remember that to find the domain, The domain is going to be all the numbers with some exceptions. Look, all numbers, all real numbers, except, but I don't know, I don't know which numbers I'm going to accept. I don't know if just one exception or maybe two exceptions. 
I, I don't know. I don't know how many numbers I am going to accept here, right? Okay. Let's find out those exceptions. To find out the, ex the exceptions that, we're, that I'm going to do to the domain, I'm going to take the denominator and exclude some numbers, right? So we're going to equal the denominator to zero. X squared minus four, that is the denominator. X squared minus four, X squared minus four, equal to zero. All I have to do from here is isolate, isolate the domain. I'm sorry, isolate the variable X. Now, simply because we are practicing, we are practicing our set builder notation, we are not going to continue writing the domain like this in words. No, 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 no. We want to practice it. So we want to write it down in set builder notation, right? So all real numbers with some exceptions. Okay? In this case, the domain will be something like this. No, oh, there. So the set of all the x variables, all, all the x numbers, how do we know that this is the x numbers? Because this is the variable here, x, right? The, the set of all the numbers x, such as x, right, x cannot be, I don't have, I don't have a, a, a sign for cannot be here. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to do this. Tin, tin. <laughs> cannot be, right? Different than. <laughs> I, I don't have a, a sign for that in here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and in here, and in here, I'm going to write down the number. Then I'll close the domain. And that is it. That is it. So let's find out what is that number or numbers, right? Sometimes we have some exceptions, not just one. Maybe we have two or three exceptions, right? So how do we isolate from here the variable? Simple. We're going to move everything else that is not the x. We're going to move it to the other side, but with the opposite operation. So let's begin with the negative, negative 4. All right, the negative 4 is going to pass to be positive, right? So we have x squared equals 4. From here, we want to take out that exponent. How do we move the exponent to the other side? A root. Beautiful, Danny. You're correct. We move it as a root. So x is going to be the root of 4. but I am sure you guys remember that roots can be positive or negative. Ah, look at that. So in this case, we have two numbers, two numbers that we can take out of the, the, of the domain, two numbers. What are those two numbers? Positive two and negative two. Both of these numbers are going to make it so that the denominator is zero. So we write down the domain. Let me write it down here. Oh, no. Let me write it down there. Look at that. The domain is the set of all the numbers x, such as x is different than negative 2, and x is different than 2. Look at that. That is going to be our domain. That is going to be our domain, guys. There it is. All right, so today, what did we learn today? All right, today we learned how to find the domain of rational functions, right? We learned what are rational functions, and we also learned how to write the domain as set builder notation. So what I want you to do right now, guys, is please go and practice. Go and practice, guys. We only have 20 minutes to practice, 20 minutes. You don't have to do all of these, all right? Don't worry if you don't finish all of these, guys. Don't worry. Just do as many as you can, all right? If you can if you can do two or three today, that is great. Just make sure that those two or three are perfectly done. And as always, if you have doubts, you can count on me. I am here for you guys. Ask away. I can help you. Remember, at 940, you need to go to Alex and take the quiz. Bye-bye, guys. I uh, know. Bye-bye. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, that's what I mean. I, I, I didn't mean I was going to leave for real, right? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs>